Well, we're discussing some of the ultimate issues facing our country at this time and also impacting many other nations. These are ultimate issues that, that have to do with God, his message to us, his extension of his grace and his mercy, the path to grace and mercy from the Lord, the avoiding of judgment, yeah. which he sent his son. He did, you know, his son didn't come to get authority to destroy us. He already had that authority. <laughs> you know, I mean, he could have destroyed us at any time. He came to save us. Yeah. And there are ultimate things that lead to us, and he's speaking to us. And, and one of the greatest revivals that had, I believe in church history began in Los Angeles. 1906, I mean, the incredible story of Azusa Street could arguably be the only revival that has not yet stopped. <laughs> it is still burning. It left yeah. Azusa, but it's still fires of revival, of the Pentecostal revival, are still burning wow. all over the earth. Yeah. Something was started there, and I believe the key, the nitro and the glycerin, was a white man and a black man who joined together Seymour, William Seymour, you know, wanted God more than he wanted oxygen. A hunger for God, maybe, I mean, one of the most extraordinary hungers for God I think you'll ever find in a human being. Bartleman, the same thing. And they come together in the same place. Bartleman, the intercessor. Yes. They come together in the same place. And it was nitro and glycerin. <laughs> and it just absolutely exploded into one of the extraordinary yeah. revivals. And I was being toured around at one of the great Baptist universities, Wake Forest University, by the dean of the Divinity School, a Baptist. And the only picture, he was starting a hall of faith. And the first picture he had on his hall of faith was William Seymour from the Azusa Street My Revival. gosh. He said, in my opinion, this was the greatest man of God of the 20th century because of his hunger for God and what God released. This is a Southern Baptist. <laughs> what an extraordinary <laughs> impact. Wow. It? And, uh, you know, one of the things, that, the only commandment with a promise that we would, that things would go well with us and that our days would be long in the land that the Lord's given us. It's an Old Testament promise, I mean commandment, and a New Testament commandment repeated in the book of Ephesians, honor your fathers and your mothers. And I believe if there's anybody deserving of honor, it is that Seymour, Bartleman, what they did and what they released in the earth yeah. of this hunger for God. And this is the ultimate issues that we would love God again with a fire and a passion. Yeah. Obey the first commandment. The, the main job description of every human being on earth is to love God. This is what we're here for, and this is where greatest peace and satisfaction is. Yeah. Joined with that intercessory. Yeah. To carrying the things that are on the heart of God. I can tell it's touching you right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... You've written about it. I've written books about it, you know, I love, because it is a passion. Well, you know, as we go to Detroit, I think yeah. on 11, 11, 11, this is a huge theme. Yeah. Actually, they said in that, that Pentecostal outpouring that the, the, the color line was washed away in the blood. Right. See, one new yeah. man joined together. God finds his little axe company and they begin to speak in, in tongues together. The, the divided language is united. In, in the prayer meeting and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's interesting as we're going on 11, 11, 11, one of the, the key dreams that was given to us is we've kind of just tried to hear the Lord is in the, in the dream that there was a, a, a uh, we went to an upper room in Detroit and in Detroit, in that upper room, there was a, an old black man lying there and he was a one-eyed old black man. Seymour was one eye. Was a, he, had, he was blind in one eye. And in the dream, his iris was being operated on 
so that he would live. The iris, the word iris actually means rainbow. I believe that God wants to bring the multicolor together. Hmm. And I believe that in Detroit, God is seeking to bring forth another sound of revival. The William Seymour anointing out of the, out of the black church. If you could, black, white, <laughs> multicolored church. And we believe as a black man led that revival, we are coming saying, God, could you release William Seymour mantle again out of Detroit for a, another great outpouring of the Holy Spirit? In fact, Rick, my, my story when I went to, to and I, I it's just, just such a precious story for me. When we went to Pasadena, we prayed in the very places where William Seymour prayed and Frank Bartleman, that white intercessor who got joined at Bonnie Bray Street and Azusa Street with him. Yeah. That's what took place. I, it so gripped me reading Frank Bartleman's intercessory book where he was groaning for a whole year. In 1905, he fasted so much they thought he was gonna, they thought he was gonna die. Wanted God so much, revival. And when I read his book, it put a fire in my heart. I mean, it ignited within me a hunger for revival. And I remember going into days of fasting, and then one night for two hours, I went into my garage and I cried, maybe like I'd never cried. Give me the mantle of Frank Barberman. I don't want to read about revival. I want to see it. I want to live in it. I cried and cried for two hours. And finally, I went to bed. The next day, a brother walks up to me and says, Lou, I had a dream of you last night. And in this dr dream, I saw a big black book. And the title said, Revival. He said, I turned the inside of the cover. And I saw a guy's face. And his name was Frank Bartleman. And Lou, his face turned to your face, Lou. And I knew something of the forefathers of revival in L.A. God was wanting to give me something. And, and actually, I wrote about it out of your word that the only way to stop the judgments in California is to remember the fathers. When I heard you preach that, the, I remember sitting there in my auditorium while you're preaching and instantly said, Lord, it's time to write the book, Digging the Wells of Revival. Mm -hmm. Whereas, where there were revivals in the past, there can be revivals again. It was your book that sent me off on that thing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that in Detroit, it's a black and white, Native American house. We're coming together to fast 40 days before this. Give us revival. It's our only hope. Yes, it is the only hope. And there's no reason why God can't do it again. Now, we're coming together, 11, 11, 11, to seek grace from God. We are beyond human remedy. God wants to shed his grace on us again. He prefers mercy over judgment. We're believing God for California. I've seen terrible things come into California again, to our West Coast. They can be reduced or prevented by repentance, by intercession. But if we just take these as random events and we don't get the message, we don't know yeah. the power of repentance. We don't know the power of intercession. There can be right now a greater revival in California than Azusa Street. There is grace from God for a revival yeah. to ignite there that could stop God and say, hold back. Wait, look at what is going on there. There is a returning to God and to his purposes. Now we're coming together in Detroit because there is a heartbeat of God right here in this, right here in this city, right here in this location where we're filming these right now because it is a prophetic symbol of where we're headed. And there's a saying, if you don't change your direction, you're gonna end up where you're headed. It's time to change our direction. This can be the marker. This can be the demarcation point for our nation. You don't want to miss what is going to happen in Detroit on 11-11-11. November the 11th, 2011, Ford Field in Detroit. Be there with us.